at his alma mater, has them with the highest ranking since 1967. Here are the starters, the usual five of late on each side. For a Dayton team that scores in bunches and a Colorado team that defends deftly. And they're led by a man who prizes rebounding and defense to add history of the Colorado program. But coach, I'm pumped to be with you. Pumped for this game. Oh, this should be a great matchup. And something's got to give. One of the best offensive teams in the country in Dayton and one of the better defensive teams in the country in Colorado. An infusion of transfer talent part of the story for Dayton. Ryan Mike Sell. Finds one of those transfers, Rodney Chapman. Defended by Parquet. Behind the top of the screen, who cuts, he doesn't see him. Tip pass. Nine to shoot. Chapman. Another ball screen from Toppin. Pop the three. Made the three. Well, we just got a good look at Dayton. They are number two in the nation in half-court offense. If this game is played in the half-court, it's a tremendous advantage for them. They've got all guys that can make a three, and they know how to pass the ball. Listen to the booze as Wright touches the ball here, Coach. I didn't realize it was that extreme. These teams did meet in the NIT last year as well. And moving contact to create that screen and knock Chapman down to the ground. Well, you take a look at a, a good use of a screen there by Obi Toppin, but really a tremendous step back play. And foul, by the way, on Eli Parquet. Only became a starter six games ago. Doesn't play a ton of minutes. Beat the other end. A lot of action on the perimeter. And both these teams primarily man to man. You may see Colorado use a little 1 3 1. I had them last week at Colorado State, and they took that out of the closet and used it. Oh, what a no look. And Rams changes hands in the air, but comes up clutching at his left shoulder. All right, he's in pain here, Steve. Yes, he is. I mean, God, I don't know how, what happened there. Right, the chorus of booze. Elbow J on the way, and he sticks it with Thompson flanking out with. I know they got to stop. This kid's got to something. He's got to come out. And Trey Landers co-leads the team in steals, a 10-point-a-game player who's been on fire, almost 50 in his last four. You can see that grimace. Something with his shoulder. So Izzy Watson, who's their top bench scorer, will come in. What do we see here? It, it, I didn't. Oh, when he went into the chest, it looked like there a parquet underneath. Huh. Dayton's incredibly deep. It's so versatile, right? Seven guys have scored in double figures and led the team in scoring this year. So this is a team that has a bunch of weapons. Watson new to the fray. He lurks in the near right corner. Mike Sell, dangerous gift to top it. Crutcher battling right. Only two to shoot. He doesn't realize the time. Is it off? Yes! Are they going to look at that? Defensively, they haven't been great this year. They have, but I mean, when you're shooting 54% from the field and 40% from three, you can get away with your defense not being as good. Talk to Anthony Grant before the game. He said the key to us being as good as we can be by the end of the year is improving on our defense. Really, offensively, they can't improve except maybe to turn the ball over a little bit less. That's been a bugaboo for the Buffaloes. They turn it over a lot, particularly of late. A lot. Right, a deep three. Drains it. You know McKinley Ryan is up for this game. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, here's a kid who was 1 for 11 last week against Colorado State. He really had a bad game. Played better against Prairie View the other night. And you got to understand this. Colorado played on Thursday night. Oh, a slip there. Off the bench, right into the fray. And he wants it. He came on with Trey Landers, went off with great grimace, clutching at his left shoulder. Well, I'll tell you right now, Colorado is not doing a great job of stopping Dayton, and they're getting in the lane a lot. Bay, a rare touch here for the big guy. He's more of a 15-foot big guy. He's not really a post-up guy, and he's not a three-point shooter. He's a mid-range offensive rebounding type player. Five to shoot, right, contested by Watson. The rainbow off. Mike Shell over the back goes Schwartz. Let's check in with John Rothstein for the latest on Landers. All right, guys, Trey Landers just went back to the locker room for more tests. Dayton's trainer worked with him with different different exercises. We still no word, but he went back to the locker room for further tests. We are evaluating the situation moving forward, John. Appreciate that. And they're also without Chase Johnson, the Florida transfer. Third straight game out with illness. 
Does that affect it? They're so deep, but now they're down two guys. I mean, Trey Landers is one of those guys. He's a tremendous glue guy. He does all the little things. He's the second leading rebounder. He's a senior. He's an important guy in this program. Off the fake, Watson. Oh, give him the pass. Is Schwartz playing soft after the foul? Uh, you know what? It's hard to say, but that was really some bad defense right there. Dayton is now 5 of 5 from the field. And Wright has been the offense for the Buffaloes. Now you love it. Evan Batty asking for the ball down low. Yeah, I think they need to go into it because the one place that Dayton has really gotten hurt this year was inside the paint. They gave up 52 points to Kansas in the paint. Now, they do have one of the best centers in the country in Azubuke, but they have struggled to defend the paint. Three ball off. Ibby Watson pressed into action. Summoned off. But a minor tweak in the shoulder, but he's okay now. Back on the bench. He is available to return to tonight's game, John. Appreciate that. They do have Jordy Chamanga, Nebraska transfer in. He had knee issues that sidelined him until six games ago. Oh, what a feed and the point blank body missed. Foul to trip him up. The first field goal miss for Dayton. That's a classic bounce pass into the post. He wasn't able to finish it. Yeah, that was a foul. Now that's the second foul already on Deshaun Schwartz, who leads the team at made threes. So he is out, and Maddox Daniels, Juco transfer in. And the way they are offensively, losing Schwartz is a big hit for them. Now let's look at this. Oki Toppin now is playing the four spot. He played the five spot to start the game. Now they don't have nearly as good a spacing, but look at this guy. I mean, this defense by Colorado so far has been bad, and they are a tremendous defensive team, and they're getting beat off the dribble. One thing, Dayton only has one assist in this game. They're number 10 in the nation, assists to field goal, 65% of their best, and there's a steal. Bad pass, Chapman. I think they need a timeout. 8 one to claim an 11-point lead. And just, just to show you, and I'll tell you what, I don't care if there was a timeout a few minutes, a few seconds ago, they need another timeout. Colorado doesn't score much. Daniels contested. No shot. And ripped down by the Flyers. I don't know why they're not getting Batty a touch in the lane. Shape it up. Watch it. Dayton offensively, you give these guys chances, they make you pay every time. Now, don't get me wrong, they're a tremendous offensive team as the numbers prove. But Colorado, defensively, not doing what that boy wants. How about this? Eight possessions, eight made buckets for Dayton. Eight of nine shooting. And the crazy thing is only two assists. All off the dribble. Wright sees the double team there. I mean, they got to go into batting. Dangerous pass. They haven't even looked at him, i got to be honest with you. He's not posting up right now. He's staying on the other side of the basket. Gatlin pops a three. Patty wins it. Right back to Gatlin. The dice, the dish. Daniels. Off target. Patty wins it. Drops there. Strong. I'm telling you, this is where they've got to go. This kid can really play. Big, strong, great hands, great feet. He has struggled from the foul line. He makes 10 of 11 free throws against Prairie View. This kid is where they have to throw the ball. Yeah, 29 in that game on Thursday. Oh, nice cut by Chapman. Right to the rack. The leaner off. But that was another guy that got to the basket. No help. Here's right. Heavy traffic in transition. He's been the offense. He's on fire today. He's just playing with a high level of intensity in this game. You can see. He's got seven of their nine. Toppin hasn't had a ton of touches. It's good travel. The one thing about McKinley Wright, he's a tough, physical type guard. He looks to take on the contact there and finish at the basket. Tyler Bay back in. No trigger here. Wayne Cohill gets his first minutes for Dayton. Top and gets a breather here with Dayton up 10. Gatling hit and fouled. Crutcher is first.
So how does Colorado stem the tide here? They got to start defending off the dribble, and they've got to get the ball inside. Now I know Batty's out. Get it to Bay in there. Seward, who's in, is it more of a three-point shooter? So they, Bay can get into that low post by himself. But they haven't really done a good job of feeding the post at all. They try to shape up on the near block opposite. Timer single digits. Right. Ball screen from Bay. Two to shoot. Hoist. And Orima. I mean, you got to try and turn the corner there and get in the lane. Just don't settle for the three-point shot. Crutcher slashing all. Nice lead. Didn't see it coming. Chamanga squirts out of bounds. Buffalo ball. Anthony Grant doesn't love the turnovers at times from his team. That's something he would like to see slice down a bit. I mean, they average 13 and a half a game. Under 12 and a half is usually pretty good. So they're just slightly off. Coons reds it to Bay. Spinning the face. Okay. Six unanswered. Colorado has climbed back with an eight. Now all of a sudden, Colorado has six points in the paint. Crutcher sees that same kick. Rhythm look off for Mike Sell. Bay gets inside. Defensive rebounding something Tad Boyle preaches consistently. The Big East Conference Tournament for the first time in Villanova history. One question, who was the coach, Steve Lapis? <laughs> You know what, John? You're 100% right, though. That team brought a lot. We were very young the year we won the NIT, and it was a great thing to play all those extra games. And you know what I noticed? The first two games are tough, because you obviously were just left out of the NCAA tournament. You're disappointed. But once you get rolling and the garden's in sight, you start to feel it, and it was really a great experience for our guys. And we built on it, no doubt. And congratulations to your former program. Big win today over the nation's win. number one in Kansas. Coons. Ugly miss there, but one of the high post by Ryan. Oh, what a fire to Coots! And Dayton fell asleep there. Yeah, that time Trey Landers fell asleep on that play. He just jogged back on, on defense there and just left that. So it's eight unanswered by Colorado. Back with it two possessions. Batty's ready to sub in as is Schwartz with two fouls for the Buffalo. Mike Sell trying to post, gets fronted. Crutcher top and clapping for the ball. Takes the three. And Wright wins it by his lonesome down low. Now Dayton's gone scoreless for three minutes. Coons. He was a starter earlier in the year. Seward. Dayton will switch a lot of screens out here on the perimeter. Oh, That's nice good defense. defense. Mike shaping up the one-handed feed. Mike Sell pocket pick by Bay. We were going to see a lot to Obi Toppin right there. That's what Bay can do, as you mentioned, leads them in steals. Nice idea. But Toppin darts in. Let's take a look at Trey Landers, who is a kid that depth right here. He's right there. He's a kid who definitely plays hard all the time. Number three, right here. Take a look at Trey Landers. Look where he is. And then he jogs back. You know, a difficult entry spot. Colorado gets it clean. Batty's back in. He's streaming for the ball. Big size mismatch down low. Now he's got a Mike Sell against him. Bay wants it against Toppin. Good luck with that length. Five to shoot. Coots. And it deflected by Mato. Stripped by Toppin. Two on one. Great pass. That's a two-on-one break. Obi Toppin at 6'9", waiting for the defense to come to him before he passed that ball. That was really smart, good play by Obi Toppin. Only had 11 last time out against North Texas, but he had a season-high six assists. He is a very willing passer for an elite score. Right, fed on the bounce off. Beautiful leader, floats it in. That time, Obi Toppin fell asleep. He didn't even see the cutter. The cutter was coming right into his vision. He was looking away, didn't see the floor, and couldn't help on it. Kidley Wright is 9 of Colorado's 13. 
Subs ready for both teams. Gatling at the table for Colorado. Mike Schell. Schwartz is two fouls. Drags him in the lane. Bad miss with that sweeping hook. Maddie wants it. Has there been a true clean entry to batting in the post all No, there has not been. They have not really been able to get it inside there. Schwartz can shoot. I also don't think they've been looking real hard either. Single digits on the timer again. They can end up taking a flyer again. Schwartz, oh, nice pass to the baseline. Jay off one by Bay. Reverse off. Batty says, I want this ball. Give it to me. And he'll go to the line. Anthony Grant thought his elbow was roaming a bit. It'll be Mike Sell with his first. You take a look at that. It's really good help by Manos that time to force that steal. He got to the line of the ball and was able to give help. Now a great job by Obi Toppin getting the defense. Watch how he stays until the defense overcommits. That great defense there. You got to fake it, the guy, and try and retreat. When, you get, when you're the only guy back on a two-on-one, obviously you're in trouble. You got to try and fake it, that guy. They hang him up in the air, maybe, so he makes a bad pass. Have the Buffaloes, even beyond the entries to Batty, been moving the ball enough in the half court? They're not a great half court team. They don't move the ball particularly well. They turn the ball over, which they're not going, they're not bad with the turnovers tonight so far. But they've got to look to get it inside the post a little bit more. Here comes Dayton. Matos can't find a clean feed and a trip underneath as Gatling got a piece to stumble Chapman. It'll be Shane Gatling's first. You have to say this though about Colorado. Their half-court defense has tightened up considerably after that, those first six or seven minutes. That's what Tad Boyle's team is known for. Cut his teeth as a player under Larry Brown with Kansas back in the early mid-80s. Long entry to Mike Seth. Matos, nice fake on the bounce. Landers, that left shoulder gets tested. Drops that. Travel! Anthony Grant does not agree. And that's the two, seven coming from Watson, who is the top bench scorer for the Flyers. And really, starter, bench guy. That line has been blurred a lot in basketball, right? Absolutely. I mean, you just look at the minutes. The kid plays over 21 minutes a game. He might as well be a starter. And I'm sure that's how Anthony Grant sells the role to the kid. So he comes off the bench. Oh, that's a great pass. A great finish. That's a 14-2 run with an and one free throw to come for Dalen Coots. You take a look here at this back screen that's coming. Okay, run it from there. Freeze. Batty does a great job here of setting that screen and now he's able to get that ball inside for that layup good screen by a big wide body now Koontz who was a starter in the first five games since he's gone to the bench only playing 12 minutes per looks to exceed his per game average with his free throw and he does he's got five so it's a 15-2 run over the last six minutes and Colorado is back within a point I mean, this team is too good defensively to keep guarding the way they started this game. Matos who picked up that foul. Tough flat three ball. That's a one and done. Defensive rebounding on Gatling. Nice shake. Right, ready to sub back in. Physical defense against Koontz. Schwartz has been playing with two fouls. Seward. They gave him space and he misses the easy look. Landers the board. Top of the rear touch. Right back to him. Open three. And weak side one by Dayton. And normally Kyle fell asleep. That's a great cut by Obi Toppin. He didn't stand still. The batty lost him and just let him go. It's only two made buckets for Toppin. Dayton, though, getting the defense done. That's what Rodney Chapman does. Yeah, he's a tremendous defender. He's locked up some of the best players in the country. Edward from Georgia, one of them. And uh, the kid from... Uh, Jordan Ford from St. Mary's. Jordan Ford from St. Mary's, who's one of the best guards in the country also. He's done a great job both those guys. 
24 to 11. He averages 21. Well, Edwards to six. He averages 20. A little too physical. That's Matos with his second. Jerry Matos is two. Well, you're going to see Chapman get out into this passing lane. That's kind of a lazy pass, too. He does a good job of finishing off the steal. Let's check in with John Rothstein on the sidelines. Well, guys, one of the things we're seeing with Dayton's success is a major commonality with everybody who builds great teams outside of the power conferences. Transfers, Jalen Crutcher, obviously it'd be Watson, Jordan Shamanga, Chase Johnson is not playing tonight, all came from different levels. They're older right now. It's a lot like what we saw in Nevada last year with the Martin Twins and Jordan Carroll on, John. Older players who sat out a year, got better and more seasoned. Schwartz drains the three, and I love the comment Anthony Grant had to you, John, about that sit-out year. And talking about the growth in another travel. Turnovers building some for Dayton. That's five for Anthony Grant's team. Here's the influx. That's a, a lot of volume numbers. Yeah, I would say that's pretty good, you know. And, and one thing about transfers, especially the guys that sit out there, a little bit older also, they know how important it is to want to play. They have the desire to play. They sat out most of them, so they really come in hungry. Down low, Schwartz. Nice feed. Bay denied by Tuppen. He's got some spring. Oh, and he sets a beautiful screen. Crutcher finishes. And what did Tad Boyle talk about today? He was concerned about transition. Right now, the transition hurting them a little bit. He was concerned about transition threes. Now they're giving up transition layups. And the crowd giving the boos to McKinley Wright, who originally committed to date. Right down the lane. And he draws the foul. Obi Toppin just springs off the floor. He actually goes for the shot fake and still is able to block it there. And then in transition, Jalen Crutcher. The foul on Rodney Chapman, his first. Obi Toppin, it's been well chronicled as a high school junior, stood six foot two. As a senior, six foot five. Sat out in academic redshirt when he arrived at Dayton. He's now six nine, crazy athletic. A lot of our conversation leading up to this game, who does he compare to? Who, who do you see in Obi Toppin? Wow, you know, uh, well, who did Anthony Grant say when we were talking before the game? I think he's a lot like Anthony DeCoupo. Now, don't get me wrong, that guy's the MVP of the NBA, and I'm not saying that's what Obi Toppin's going to be, but he has that kind of athleticism, that kind of spring. He's able to play out on the perimeter a little bit. Some similarities there. I believe it was David Lee. Toppin! <laughs> He can do things that are just different. He began his collegiate career with a dunk. His last points last year were a windmill against Colorado. Handling the probing dribble. Schwartz, a shooter. Smothered finds Bay. Gatlin shaping up. Bay soars and sinks. That he's ready to sub in. He's fired up, clapping on his club. Twenty of Dayton's twenty-nine have come in the paint, and that lead for Lander is a little long off Colorado. Take a look at Obi Toppin. He's setting the screen here, and Deshaun Shorts, Schwartz here, number five, is going to get caught there. Now there's a miscommunication. He stays too long. He runs to the rim, Obi Toppin, and they throw it up to him, and he's able to finish that. Not only is he a super athlete, he can also hit it from three. And, and you know what I like about him? He really moves without the ball well. We've seen him in this game so far make some really good cuts that have resulted in easy baskets. That was a tough shot. Off target for Chapman. One and done. Buffalo's a chance the other end. It also helps that he flies. And he flies. Batty, more of a bulldozer. Bay loses it to Mike Colorado bench thought a foul. Chapman stepping back. Another one in there. Dan Boyle wasn't happy with defensive rebounding in recent games, and I'm not sure if he's happy with that shot. Those last two shots, one by Dayton, by Chapman, and one there by McKinley Wright, not good.
Dave is so willing to move the ball, right? It's something Anthony Grant talked about. And really, that's the most important thing that you have to do against a really good defensive team is move the ball side to side. Here's right north and south off his own leg to Mikeson. Maybe Watson loses handle to a teammate. Chapman off the screen. Dayton's been dormant. Contested look. That's a narrow window for Chapman. That was a tough shot, no doubt. Well contested by Colorado. He's a 39% shooter. They have a bevy of archers from outside. Schwartz on what a cut off the screen. They free him up. Schwartz shoots it down. And it's back to a possession. Mike Sell. Sweeping on Bay. Oh, pretty move. Really good move. Colorado has not known a lead in this game. They trailed by as many as 14. <laughs> and yet, it's 6 and 4. Top and ready to bust back in for Dayton. Wright seemed to win some as he came to the stop. That yeah. was limping. It's out of bounds. It's Colorado ball. Well, you want to see somebody who can fly do that George Mason. We've had Loyola Chicago get to the Final Four. This may be the year one of those teams from that level, Dayton in particular, to win the whole thing. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but this is a year because there's no great, great team where one of those teams can win it all. Oh, Patty is a great bid. Wins the miss from McKinley Wright. He was still limping. He twisted his right ankle shortly before the last time out. He just wins noticeably coming up the floor. Yeah, he's uh, he's hurt. Top in the lead, Crusher. Just take the shot. And off. Great box out there. Batty down low. Wright wheeling himself through the pain. Physical arrival. That's going to be offensive as Chapman was sent down to the hardwood. That'll be called on McKinley Wright as his first. Watch his right foot. Yeah, this is where he tweaked that angle. He's coming up right there. Stepped on the foot of Jamanga. That was before the timeout. This is the last one. possession. He moved on the handoff, and that has been a point of emphasis for referees, is those moving illegal screens, especially on handoffs. When I was coaching, handoffs were a big deal. Now, everybody runs triple handoffs, and that they've gotten to the bottom of these illegal screens, and they're calling them a lot more. For one minute here, one possession game, but right, nursing, a bum wheel, and now a foul on the bench. Chapman bounces to Toppin. Chapman is Toppin cuts. That is deflected. Stolen away. See, I'm not a big fan of that kind of possession. There's 59 seconds left. Why not just... Be, be, they're going to get another possession. So why are you holding the ball there? If you end up with five seconds, you end up with a possession like that. Usually hold 30 seconds left to get a good shot. But you can't hold it for the end of the half anyway. Gatling, not a great look either. Tipped it over by Dayton. But now you want to get the last shot. Now you have to use it or lose it. Do you call it? Depends on what you're going to do. I mean, I'm not... Either way, these kids are experienced. They probably already know what they want to do anyway. Chapman floats it. Becker. I'd say that was a pretty good possession. And Colorado, no sense of urgency. Won't get a shot off here. Well, Dayton led this game 19 to 5. Particular... He's got to assert himself a little bit more because I think when it's all said and done, this Colorado team will defend at a high level. Scoring is going to be their issue. And I know he's not that kind of player, but I think he can score a little bit more and be more assertive at what he does on the offensive end. He was a double-double machine start of the year, but that is slow after they hit the sixth game. I mean, this guy was preseason first team all pack 12. One of the most improved players in the league last year, and there's an ugly giveaway. The seventh for the Buffaloes. See the number date 9 and 0 and leading at the half to lob, and it's an easy takeaway for McKinley Wright. He seems to be moving a little smooth. Yeah, he's, he's got a little hobble.
little to him, just a little bit, John, but that time they thought they could go inside the Trey Landers because McKinley Wright was on him, and they forced the issue and turned it over. They was matched up with Chapman, and Batty didn't give it to him. He was screaming for it. Three ball off for Gatling, and Landers wins. I'm, That's a little, mismatch. I'm a little surprised that they have not looked at Batty more in this game. Toppin. Look to Crutcher over top of the screen. Oh, nice pass. Well, pass. Extra good. That was a, I'll tell you what, that was a big time find by Obi Toppin. That's why this kid is going to be a really good player at the next level because he can do everything that you need to be on a good team. Right, floats it up. He has been fantastic. Right with 13 to lead the way for Colorado. Toppin, he can shoot too. They rips it. Right, hobbled some, twisted that right ankle in the late stage of the first half. Yeah, he's not moving. I'm going to say he looks like he's 90. But he's not 100. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I look like that, but I'm 90. I hope I'm 90 with that. Contested long two, untrue for Schwartz. And it feels a little flat here to start the second. It does. But we started out with a couple of turnovers. And there's another one. And right, can't turn on the Jets. Still gets a stride on Crutcher and draws the foul. Savvy move there. Maybe the second on Crutcher. Crutches might be needed for right before the end of the night. Well, you take a look at McKinley Wright going up the floor here. He seems like when he has the ball, he's all right. So when he doesn't have the ball in his hands, then he's limping a little bit. And, of course, he originally committed to Dayton. Then the coaching changed when Archie Miller departed for Indiana. He said this week, I was committed to that school, speaking of Dayton, so I want this win. I need this win. Before the season, his coach, Tad Boyle, told him that they were playing Dayton again. My eyes lit up. I have a lot of family in Chicago. He said about 50 to 60 family members would be here today. And yet, the boos have outweighed the cheers in this pro Dayton crowd. And I'll give him this, he's played well. A lot of times these homecomings don't work out great, but he's played well today. That's what Tad Boyle forecasted. He said he thought he would thrive with that type of pressure. A oh, bad pass for Tom yeah. Dayton's been sloppy here to begin the set. No doubt about it. But I had a kid named Kerry Kittles who was from New Orleans, and we went to play the University of New Orleans, and he was awful for like 35 minutes. We're in this game, we're down, down. Last five minutes, he scores like 20 points to save the game. But he was having one of those homecomings that was not turning out. Right, oh, what a fake. Got Chapman into the air, can't hit. Almost like a senior day, right? That same kind of gamut oh, no, of emotion. No doubt about it. Aggressive cut. And the foul drawn. It looks like they'll get right with his second. Yeah, so it'll be McKinley right with two. He got to attack him, right? But if he's limping this yes, way, I would say absolutely. And you know what? It's hard to say because he hasn't done a great job containing the ball even before he tweaked that angle. So he, they've got to get in their stance and make Dayton shoot more perimeter contested perimeter shots. These will be the first free throws for Dayton. They don't take a lot, but coach it. It's because they shoot so well, right? They shoot 53% as a team and 40% from three. You don't need the foul line that much. <laughs> you know you know how you get to the foul line? Offensive rebounds. Well, they don't have a whole lot of offensive rebounds in their repertoire because they, they don't miss. They make more than half they take. They lead the country in field goal percentage. Even in this game, John, they shot 57% in the first half. Let's understand this. Colorado's only had one team this year shoot 50% against them the entire season. They shot 57 in the first half. Day. And was number one Kansas, by the way. At home. Oh, Gatling feeds the bay. Nice. Fake and the reverse jam. Oh, that was beautiful. Need him to spring the life. He's been quiet and get Colorado within two. Now they get it against right. Crutcher. Chapman stepping back. Off the heel. And right takes it away from Mike Zell. Batty brings it up. Comes to him. 
batting against top, and he can't find it. Well, that is because Trey Landis put good pressure on Tyler Bay, so he couldn't go with the high-low pass. Only four to shoot. Bay, head fake. Bay at the horn, off. Here comes Dayton. Chapman, Mike Sell, foul. Offensive down the lane, and Landers can't believe it. That'll be his first. When you take a look here, this happens a lot. Wow, that's that sold a bit. That was it, there was a hard one. Is that a flop? Bobby was a flop, but that's a hard call for a referee. That's four turnovers in the half already for Dayton, but Colorado responds. Gatling out of bounds. We journey to break. Dayton, 13th in the country. Well, Batty on the floor along with Bay. Dayton has the ball. Flyers led this game 19 to 5. It's whittled down to two. Maybe Watson had subbed in right before the break. And remains on the floor. Mike Sell against Schwartz. Nice spin move. Just off and right. Somehow elevates and wins it. He's a very good rebound. The average is over five a game. Oh, nice job there by Watson, but one back. No possession exchange. Timer rolls. Gatling in and out. Mike Sell's got it. Top him. Leave and screen. He wants the ball. Size so, mismatch. Yeah. Great pass back. Great tip back. Whatever you want to call it. And a one and done. Buffaloes have been great on the defensive board. They are one of the better defensive. Listen, if you're going to be a good defensive team, you have to finish possessions by defensive rebounding. And they're really good at that. That time, Dayton just falls asleep. But Kimmy Wright goes right for the rim. It's not quite a Euro on that ankle. Loader. Another one and done. Batty's got it. Defensive rebounding has been an issue the last three games. Right. Off target. Batty rips it down and gets hit. Twisting on Landers. And you know, I was just going to say, Batty looks tired to me when he's coming up the floor. And then he just went after this ball, and it was his. Much stronger than anybody out there. And then McKinley Wright. I mean, that was Dayton just falling asleep right there. And then... Batty, look at this rebound. I mean, that's with two guys on him. He just wanted it more. And the Buffaloes have their first lead of the game. They've stormed back from down 14 to take the lead over 13th ranked eight. You know, they got stunned early. For one thing, when you're a solid defensive team, you just got to keep making stops. And Batty, who had free throw woes you had spoken about, Tad Boyle said they were subbing offense defense for him against Colorado State. And after the game, he told him, hey, I have confidence in you at the line. You're going to stay in late, and you're going to take free throws. Well, it's funny, though. I, I thought he was tired, and now Tad Boyle just took him out. <laughs> he departs just as Colorado has claimed its first lead. How can Dayton respond? Great defense there. Tyler Bay showed why he's one of the best defensive players in the country. Five giveaways for Dayton in the half, and Wright gets hit and fouled in route. Talk about a perfect matchup. Batty on top of it, not a great matchup. But Tyler Bay and Toppin against each other, very similar, long, athletic guys. That's a big foul there, by the way. That's three on Jalen Crutcher. So Mike Sell and Crutcher out. How do you manage minutes for Crutcher here with three fouls? Well, I think they got to take him out for a couple of minutes only. I think he, he can come back in, take him out for 12, keep him, keep him, put him back in at the under 12. He's an experienced guy. He should be fine. Schwartz got the rebound on his own three-point miss. Bad break and bang on the spot. Well, Colorado is dominating inside right now. Dominating on the glass in the first half. It was really the paint was more Dayton. 8-0 run for Colorado. And Dayton looks stunned. Chapman, a great threat to a cut. Top and end one. You know, I talked earlier about Obi Toppin and the way he moves without the ball. Here's another example. He uses that screen. He cuts to the basket. Too much miscommunication there. And he gets a layup. But he does move very well without the ball. 
Toppin with eight. Batty just now journeys to the table. He's going to sub back in for Colorado. And one free throw and this. Rebound Colorado. Short surveys. Right against Chapman. Defensive stalwart. And that is at the table because he really is a tough matchup for Dayton. He's ready to come back in. All right, trying to post against Chapman. Feed the bag. Over Toppin. Tough shot. See, but that's what he's got to do. He's got to assert himself a little bit on the offensive end. He's a talented kid, and this team struggles to score. He's in double figures. He's now got 10. Oh, oh what a lead! Long before it got tossed up to the rim. That's a freight train that'll freeze you. Does that stellar offense lead to defense? Right asking for the screen. Seven to shoot. Chapman falls. Seaward. Off the iron, back to the shooter. Bay extra down and Schwartz hammers it home. And Anthony Grant going nuts on the sidelines for Dayton. They get Chapman here. Controversy was there. Chapman brings it up. Saw raised fist zero to the table from one of our officials. And we believe it was a warning for a flop. Landers leaves. Cohill to top it. Oh, nice fake. Watson hit the iron. Wants it. Oh, he's got a size mismatch. Extra kick. Seaward. The stampede is on. Let me tell you what. That was a great pass. I mean, they talk about Batty's passing. He threw almost a no-look pass to Seaward right on the numbers. The quality of the pass affects the quality of the shot. That was a quality pass, and it became a to know who he's guarded and be more ready to stop that three-point shot. Dayton led this game by 14. Here's Colorado up seven. It's Dayton's ball out of the Flyers call timeout. Next dead ball also means another media timeout. Top of the kick. Well, you got to give Colorado credit in terms of their half court defense here in the second half because they are playing a team that can really score. And Cohill just nights in. Puts in the rain, which has been their best offense the whole night. How can they slow this resurgent? They gotta get on the glass. Yeah. They gotta get on the glass. They gotta stop turning it over. They've given Colorado too many opportunities, whether it was on the glass or off turtles. This is something Anthony Grant spoke to us about. Seward. He just made his first triple shortly before that break. And Anthony Grant was concerned about both those things. Because understand this Colorado does force 16 turnovers a game. Cohill again, rejected by Schwartz. It's a five on four. Schwartz slow to the party. See where the extra give. Schwartz, the three. Little flat. Beatty wins it. Put back off from the fire. Dayton has it. A collapse. Travel. Colorado ball. All American that nobody knows about in Trace Tinkle, the son of Wayne Tinkle. Well, there's no doubt the Pac 12 much better this year. I mean, I was talking to Bobby Hurley when I had his game last week. They were 12 and 6 in the Pac 12, and they played the, in the first four in Dayton last year. That is not what the Pac 12 is looking to do this year. They'll be much better. McKinley Wright looking to get it done against the team he originally committed to. He's been really good in this game, I'll tell you. 19 points, 8 rebounds. Second chance points. It's now 8 to nothing. Colorado this half. Top of hit. They're going to get Seaworth there. His first. 
Did he travel? Did yeah, he, he that traveled. Foot? Yeah, he came down and he moved. He shuffled his feet, which is what you do sometimes when you're trying to gather yourself. He gathered himself by traveling. Seward back to the bench for Colorado. Thompson, Crutcher back in. Watson. And he travels. Turnovers continue to pile. That's seven seven and a half. Seven turnovers. Four for 12 from the field. So you got to give Colorado and their defense tremendous credit. Whatever Tad Boyle said at halftime was pretty good. Top 25 of the country in scoring defense. Don't defend the three grade on there. Dayton has been an interior team on the night. On top and deep, some space. They off top. You know, it's like when you're getting ready to coach the game, you're Tad Boyle and you're saying to your guys, we want you to close out that three point. We don't want them beating us from three. And that's what they've done. They've taken that away. And now they're just not making enough twos to, to get a lead. And one of the things Dayton does best is transition. There haven't been a lot of transition chances. And how many good threes have they gotten? Look, that wasn't a good three. But a foul oh, on Coach, and that'll be three free throws for Crutcher. I mean, how many good looks from three has Dayton got in the second half? You just can't commit that can't foul, do that. right? Can't do that. You know he's going to take a tough three. He's moving to his left. He's 26, 24 feet from the basket. If he makes it, he makes it. Go five. He's just about automatic at the line. He's missed once and now 15 attempts. Now he is known, even from jump when he was a freshman, praised by Anthony Grant for his eagerness to take big shots, for his confidence, for his maturity. He uh, famously said earlier in his career when asked about big free throws, pressure, what's pressure? I love being at the line in big moments. Yeah, it's good to have guys like that. The way things are developing for this Dayton team, they're going to have a lot of big moments this year. And the man they call Clutcher converts. Now Dayton offers pressure. And can they ride in a homecoming against the team that he originally committed to? He's done a really good job running this game. He's turned it over a couple of times, but he's really run the game for Colorado. Draws the double, finds Bay. Kick to Schwartz. Off the fake, Schwartz. And a foul. They're going to get Toppin here on the block. What do you think? Well, here's what I think. I think I'm lucky that I have the monitor to look at again. I'm not a referee. <laughs> I got the easy job. I think that's a good call. He was not said. I was not, he moved into him, I right. think. Here, he moved into him there. I think he did not have legal guarding position there. It's five of the team. Schwartz misfires on the free throw. Some subs for the Flyers. Trey Landers is back in along with Ryan DeMikeso. Watson gets a breather along with Jordy Chamanga. Anthony Grant's team has lost once. That was an overtime to Kansas. And this Dayton team that scores in great bunches. Just outside the top five of the country at 85 per is below 50 with nine minutes to go. Well, this Colorado team has held five teams this year under, under 50 points. Gatling ready to sub back in for the Buffaloes just got to the tape. Top and wanted it. Takes it. And a miss and another one and done. Right, playing with such vision and purpose. He's been attacking all night, there's no doubt about it. There it is. Turns the corner, makes the little floater. 21. He was 1 of 11 in a rivalry game against Colorado State a week and a day ago. I think the fans got smart and they stopped booing him every time he touched the ball. <laughs> because that wasn't working. Yeah, that was uh, kerosene, as John Rothstein likes to say. Not quite the true alley oop, but Landers converts. That good seal up by Trey Landers that time, using his strong body on Bay to seal him up. And all credit to Jackie Moon for its blessed adventure. Schwartz. Schwartz loads. Three ball rattles down. McKinley Wright says he tells him every day in practice, you don't know how good you are 
He's showing it here tonight. He's got a dozen. And I'll tell you about Schwartz. He's a big, strong kid that can shoot it. Athletic jump give. Extra pass. Crutcher. Toppin. Right back to him. Feed the shooter. I like what Obi Toppin did there. Obi Toppin was wide open from three. He's a great player. He could have easily shot that. But he knows Jalen Crutch is the best three-point shooter on the team. And he was open. He got him the ball. He's got 13 to lead Dayton. Colorado's got the lead. Faye. Off target. Great box by Toppin against that. Toppin screens. Mike Sell. Toppin. Nope. He looks off. Is he forcing it a bit? Yeah, uh, well, he, he's always in set. You know, don't get me wrong. He can make threes, but he's not a three-point shooter, so he's got to take good ones. Foul to Ryan to Mike Sell. We have a tightrope walk here in Chicago. You know, it's Saturday, so he shouldn't hit a lot of traffic getting out to the Wind Trust Arena. If it was during the week, I don't know, but I think today will be all right. <laughs> Well, we wish him the best of luck, and you can catch him, Ben Holden, Chris Walker, on the back end of this Windy City twin build. Right, sees the double. They've been doing that a bit here. Batty, off foul. Oh, he got a call. Foul. Crowd thought travel. You think foul. Yeah, Buffalo's think Bay. Oh, what a one-handed feed right. Nearly the end one. Yeah, you got to call something there. Anthony Grant wanted the steps. <laughs> Maybe Tremondo with his first foul. And that's a foul. Right. Clearly, he moved into it. And the contact with Batty. That's a different story. Two shots. So right at the line. He's five for five with the stripe. And John Rothstein... Out into the bitter cold, and I think the limit, right? Is that what's taking him? I guess. I mean, he's getting a lot of pump tonight. I got to tell you. Look at this shakes. He's getting a lot of pump tonight. <laughs> uh, you know. Every time we were all together before the game, and I heard random people in the crowd shouting, John, John, if I default, I said, no, no, it's, it's Rob, the real star. Come on. <laughs> Dayton in dire need of some rhythm and offense. Can Mike Sell deliver? Oh. Yes! <laughs> You know, like most good shooters, and Mike Sell's a good shooter, he knows he's got a shot before he even catches the ball. He felt that one coming. He had 19 against Kansas and Mallory, including nine in that overtime. Right. Not fair. What a move! Lemons! I think they need a timeout, Colorado. They'll get it. Timeout, Buffaloes. They've been doubling McKinley Ryan and Landers delivers. Rodney Chapman transfer out of Chattanooga. Comes from great pedigree. His dad, Rodney, turned down a football scholarship to Notre Dame to play basketball. He was a stud for USC, late 80s, early 90s. He said play to try to get it into Tyler Bay, but Landers did a great job fronting him in the low post. Dayton has sprung to life defensively here. Far more active. Batty. Oh, oh good spin move. move. Oh. Rejected. Two to shoot. I tell you what, that was a really good move, and that was a really good defensive play. That was a big time defensive play by Jamonka. And you and Rothstein had said he could be a big, big factor. Two seconds, what do you want? Well, you gotta get something. You got enough time to get it right there. That's Gatling. what you want. A little flat. Here comes Dayton. Slow getting back, Patty, that time. Landers lurking on the wing. He wants the ball. Chapman looking to the bench. Anthony Grant, hand signals. I was going to say, where's Obi Toppin? He's at the table coming in. Oh, Chapman, blow by. And Colorado's got it. A one possession game. Dayton led by 14. Right flicks to Bay. The head pick doesn't do it. Top is going back to the bench. Going to try to keep him out to the media. 
five to shoot. Against Chapman. Wow. Heavily contested. That, that was all upper body straight. That's why you saw McKinley right with the flex. He's right. That was flex worthy. He's got 25. Colorado's got it out of bounds. And how about the body language of Chapman there? The shoulders slumping, the big exhale. Now watch him after the shot. I mean, he just got taken pretty hard there. Yeah, he's right. He said, I want this win. I need this win. That's what the kids say. I got some guns. He showed his guns there. <laughs> Each team is looking for a signature win. Dayton taking on the Pac 12's preseason number two. Colorado facing the nation's number 13. I think yeah, they brought Toppin back in because they were on offense. I think they were going to wait for the media. Is the defense different here? Structure. Rainbow effort off. Schwartz has They like to go to 1 3 1 every so often and just to got to jumble things up. They don't do it much. Right. A little tight. Batty. Oh, he is a man in there. Right sprawling. Mike Sell had it. Toppin's been eerily quiet. Batty's out of gas. Approach three minutes. Dayton looks rudderless here. Here's the floater to Toppin. Deflected by Bay. Toppin's got it. Opposite Mike Sell. Extra get pressure. Off the fake. Inside. Wide open. What a move. It started with the shot fake. They closed out hard on Crutcher, who's a great three-point shooter. He gives the shot fake. He gets in the lane. That is good offense there. We have had a great game. Chicago Legends. United Center, the home of the Bulls. Colorado has missed six of its last seven from the field. I'm telling you, Batty needs a break. Right hits. They're going to get Chapman here. But Chapman's got two. Dayton, they have really crushed Dayton. I mean, Colorado's crushed them on the glass. 15 offensive rebounds to four for Dayton. Second free throw good. Second chance point 16 7 as a result of Colorado's favor. Dayton led this game by 14 points. And here's Colorado up three. Colorado started 7 0. Lost to Kansas, lost to an underrated Northern Iowa team. Top of turnaround off. Dayton's got cold, sent it the other way. No, I think they're calling an aggressive box out there. Dayton hasn't blown a 14-point lead and lost since November of 2013 against Baylor. By the way, under Archie Miller, that year's Flyers team made the Elite Eight. And they do get Tyler Bay, you're right, his first. Top it against Bill. Muscling him in. One hand. Oh. 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 oh, my goodness. <laughs> and that was with a different hand. That's a long arm of the law right there. One point game. Timeout, Colorado. Obi Top. Big thing. They'll get to the foul line. It'll only be a one and one. One more foul. You gotta get something going to the basket. They've been effective, obviously, with McKinley Wright using the pick and roll also. Wright gets the clear out over Chapman. Off. Tapped by Batty. Won by Dayton. Slip out of bounds. Colorado ball. One of the few defensive rebounds they've been able to get. They end up going out of bounds. They cleared it out for McKinley Wright there. Let him just go one on one. Not a bad move, considering the kind of game he's had. Got a pretty good shot off. And Batty's still got a hand on that. And the Buffaloes have it up top, Schwartz. We approach 90 seconds. Deadly shooter, given some space by Mike Schell. 
Right, give it a little ground by Chapman. He's got to take it to the basket. Near the horn. That was a bad possession. Now that's a bad possession. And you got to go to Topman here. But I don't like having Jamonde in the game with Topman. Well, Dayton's got two timeouts. Anthony Grant exhausts one. Dayton looking for the lead when we're back. So that's another big guy to clog it up. They took Jamonga out. Now they have four good three-point shooters in the game surrounding Obi Top. Get it in Obi Top. If they double him, he's a good passer. He'll find one of those shooters. Tad Boyle said they would not double Toppin in the post. And now he's just setting in. screens on top now. Oh, illegal screen. They're going to get oh. right. He's got three. So it's one away from bonus in they, Dayton's favor. They had one to give. You'd have rather given it a little bit in a different situation than that. But now it's one and one for Dayton if they get fouled. 16 to shoot. Top and screen feeder. Batty off the bounce. No. Crutcher. Ball screen top and on the switch. He's got Batty. Five to shoot. Oh, they're not going to get a good one. Crutcher. Right pass. Right. Windmill attempt. Off. Tips. Tumble. Whistle. And Crutcher is writhing. Clutching at his head. There was some hard harm falling to the floor. They're going to get Mike Sell with his third. They ended up really taking way too much time and didn't get a good attempt. But I tell you, this baddie's tough. Well, that was a hard shot in the head of the floor for yeah. Jalen Crutcher. Oh, my goodness. So now, one and one free throws arrive, and it's going to be Batty, who has been up and down at the line, 63% on the year entering the game. Last year was a 71% shooter. He's coming off the best day of his career. He was 10 of 11 Thursday against Prairie View A&M. Front end of a one and one. Good. And this kid was struggling from the line this year so badly. He is now five for five at the strike tonight. Trying to make it a three point game to become the fourth Buffalo in double figures. Second differential, a timeout. What do you want? Well, you got to attack, and you got to attack fast. You're down here in this situation. Take something to the basket. Chapman, timeout. Anthony timeout. Grant didn't Dayton. like what he saw. He'll talk it over. We'll be back. 22 seconds. Dayton ball down. Now, I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to get the ball in bounds, and he's going to immediately post up right from the out of bounds. Going right to the box. Lob goes to Crutcher. Now he screams. Topped and fed on high three. Wow. Off and Wright's got it. They're going to have to give the foul. Oh, you got it. it finally comes with 13.8. I mean, I don't know about that one. I mean, and he is crestfallen. You can see it. I mean, you want to get the ball over top of it. You want to get the ball over top of it at the three point line? I, I just have to question they didn't get the ball inside once to him in this last two minutes. I mean, there's a reason. Don't get me wrong. Batty has a tough time chasing chasing him outside, but that just was not really a great possession. You want you're only down two. You want to get something going to the basket and get two free throws out of that. Something. So McKinley Wright, who entered averaging 11 and a half points per, has erupted for 26 and 10 boards. Misses another free throw miss for Colorado. So two have come here in just the last 10 seconds. Flyers have no timeouts. Buffaloes have one. Well, they got to push this thing up the floor. Right. Makes it. They have time to take a two, but it's got to be in the. It's got to be quick. They can take a quick two if they want. But if this thing gets under five, let's see if they're going to foul Colorado. Toppin. Three ball to tie. Yes. Five point eight. Buffaloes have a timeout. Right. You got to tie. Right for the win! Overtime in Chicago! Unbelievable. Obi Thompson wasn't close on his last few threes, and he knocked Now the services tonight of Chase Johnson. Third straight game out due to illness. He did not travel. The ball tapped and won by the Buffaloes. 
And McKinley Wright has been the stud star for Colorado. Yeah, you know, he really should have taken it to the basket on that last possession he just pulled up. Tweaked his ankle early in the game. Cross to Gatling, extra give Bay, elbow J. Long board to Chapman and Dayton. Dayton hasn't led since it was 40 to 38 early second half. Toppin against Batty. Nice whip around look, and Gatling deflects out of bounds. Close to shoot. Here's a pretty tough entry point. What do you do here? Very tough entry point. At least you got a really big guy throwing it in. Lob it all the way up top. This is what they ran last time. The quick pick and roll with Obi Toppin taking it out of bounds. Ooh. This time he cuts. Bucket. First lead for Dayton since the early stage of the second half. I think you got to get it to him going to the basket like that. The Colorado response. Buffalo started 7 0. Was staggered on the road to Kansas. Lost to a talented Northern Iowa team. Right. Switch to the cover. Puts it on. He's got 29. He's been really good taking the ball to the basket. Topping a little off. Great screen by Topping. Watson giving a little bit of breathing room. Shot off. Rebound. Put back. Short. Schwartz. Batty's hurt. Batty falling to the bench. Clutching in his lower left half. You can see the grimace. They get secret to the table. Bay opposite. Extra game. Schwartz. Great three. Great building for that time. time. When you get the ball inside and you kick it outside, a lot of good things happen. Starting with the inside out. Hard cut. And a whistle. Got him on the back. They count the bucket, but what's up with Batty? How does this change things for Colorado? Well, it changes things big time. I mean, he's been a monster on the offensive glass, especially. And that foul, by the way, McKinley writes fourth. So their best big goes to the bench in pain. And Wright is now a foul away from being out for the day. Well, watch Batty here. Hard to see. Yeah, I didn't really see what happened. At the line, and one free throw. Dayton's got it! Andy Watson, slashing. The miss, Crutcher. Reset, right? All of a sudden, Batty's out of the game. They can't get it off. They can't get a defensive rebound. Chapman. Mike Sutton cleans it up. Only a second bucket of the ball game, and it pushes the 13th ranked team in America back on top. McKinley Wright has to be careful he doesn't get a charge. Schwartz wants it. Ten to shoot. Right on high. Tough shot. Loose one by Dick. I don't like McKinley Wright just pulling up for those threes. I like him taking the ball to the basket. Dayton, it feels like there's a calmness that's now arrived with Batty out with apparent injury. And Thompson not in the game. Oh, what a move. He lost Schwartz. Watson finishes. to the Michael overtime. Out of Colorado's call timeout, 25 to shoot. Schwartz the entry. You want right off the bounce? Absolutely. That's been their best off, especially with the team that's in the game now. If they leave Schwartz alone, Gatling also is a very good shooter who has not done anything in this game. 
Dayton doubled right late stage second half. Had some success. They're looking for Tyler Bay. Bay against Chamanga. Contested look of foul. That'll be Jordy Chamanga's second. So Bay to the strike. He is a strong free throw man in volume and efficiency. Second of the Pac-12. And free throw attempts of an eight, 76% shooter converts. And Manny is going to be able to read this one and come in. <laughs> well, a lot of people may not, a lot of people may not know what you're talking about there. <laughs> and many years ago, famously, I'm surprised you knew that one. I grew up a Knicks fan. Yeah, but that was, uh, it was before, I was, before you were born. I was going to say. I learned my history. Bay converts. And here comes Dayton. Colorado has sliced it back down to a point. This feels like a tournament game. And is this, these are two NCAA tournament teams. Top of the man who forced free basketball screens for Watson. Back to the screener. Top pitch. But Battian gets the board. That was a really good catch, too, by Topping. You know Wright wants this desperately. Young man spent part of his childhood in Chicago. He's going to spend time in a timeout. Colorado calls its final timeout here with 43 seconds and 16. Nine fouls on Dayton, seven of Colorado. The only timeout remaining belongs to the Flyers. Colorado just exhausted its last timeout with 43 seconds left. Batty remains in the game. Well, they, they try to deny McKinley Wright the ball. Hard to deny this young man. Five to shoot. Schwartz down the lane. Left hand! You know, that's one thing that we have not seen from Deshaun Schwartz is taking it to the basket. Down one. You got to really, there's no shot clock, but you don't want to take a last shot when you're down one. You want to run some good offense here and try and at least give your seed the three. Colorado needed to not give up the three that time. Down one, 22.9. Now you really want to take something to the basket. It is single bonus. Crutcher. Gets to the cup. Bucket. A little too easy. No timeouts. Right. The game on his shoulders all day. Oh. Lob to Bay. Against Mike Sell. He's doubled. Opposite Schwartz for the win. Yeah.